I'm going to show you how to measure longshore drift. The aim of this is to measure the transportation of sediments along a coastline. Now to get started we're going to need some field equipment to measure longshore drift with. We're going to need a ruler. We're going to need some measuring tape. And we're going to need a floating device like a tennis ball. Or alternatively we're going to need a orange or a cork. Finally you're going to need some sort of stopwatch for measuring the time it takes for the ball to travel from one end to the other. Okay I've got my meter ruler here and I'm going to mark out the starting point uh, from which I'm going to measure longshore drift. I've got the 30 meter measuring tape We've measured it out so there's about 10 metres on either side because at this point I don't know whether the ball is going to head north or if it's going to head south. So I've taken this precaution so I'm going to drop it here in the middle. Um, I also have a beautiful assistant over there who's got my stopwatch and she is going to time the amount of time it takes for the swash and backwash to cause this ball to zigzag to the end. So let's place this ball. When you're measuring longshore drift, there are other considerations you've got to take into account. For example, the weather conditions on the day or the tidal currents. So before you come out into the field, it is good to find out what the tides are for the day and also maybe measure the wind speed. You also got to consider obstacles in the water, for example rocks that might catch your float because that could severely interrupt your results. And another important thing is you want to take some spare floats because you're going to probably get several floats lost over the course of the day. So anyway, geographers, all the best in your endeavours to measure longshore drift.